the session is about networking let's investigate the networking so first thing if you see IP tables there are few rules here IP tables hyphen T NAT and uh, display the rules so if you see pre routing policy or chain of rules where we have docker is accepting the connections and then we have uh, important thing is for here is masquerade that is NAT so it is forwarding the packets to this 172.17.0.0 slash 16 this our this is our docker interface if you see IP space A I am talking about this docker interface so the packet forwarding how the packets are forwarded when you start a container how the communication happen what are possible routing mechanisms why do we need container networking interface plugin CNI what is the job of this CNI or container networking interface how can we ensure that we can map the port or the IP address of the virtual uh, container the container to be precise container with the physical MAC address of the machine or how can you use we use port forwarding or can we simply connect two containers to uh, talk to each other with some kind of link created between the two this session is about the networking this session is about how containers talk to each other and how containers can talk to the host machine or how the containers can interact with the outside world so container networking is very crucial topic this session discuss the networking in docker so this is session 5 docker networking why we need docker not networking how docker and kernel networking work together because ultimately docker needs to talk to kernel for packet forwarding because packet may be simply forwarded that's coming to this machine but not getting inside the machine and forwarded from this to somewhere else the packet that is forwarding so how packet forwarding happens how packet get inside the container and how can we get the reply what are the possible networking scenarios so we'll discuss port forwarding, exposing container ports, linking containers and container routing. In other words, this session is all about networking between containers in Docker. So first is why do we need networking? Answer is quite simple that containers need to talk to the external world. Containers need to interact or reach containers from external world to use the services that container provides allows containers to talk to the host machine intercontainer connectivity in same host and across hosts also we need to discover services provided by containers automatically there are a couple of reasons that we need container networking the container networking interface model the CNM the CNM standardizes the steps required to provide networking for containers using multiple container drivers there are a lot of drivers available and you select the right driver for your requirement the CNM has interfaces for IPAM plugins and network plugins. This IPM, IPAM plugins, the APIs are used to create or delete address pools. Address pool means the complete CIDR block from where the containers will take their IP address. Hence, it also allocate, deallocate container IP addresses whereas the network plugin APIs are used to create and delete networks and add or remove containers from the network 
work like DHCP server allocating IP addresses deallocating IP addresses the CNM has mainly five is built on five objects one is the network controller second is the driver third is network endpoint and fourth is sandbox how these packets travel to and from docker and kernel so docker and kernel networking docker uses two processes to achieve its external communication capability one is port forwarding which you have seen in our multi container or multi image multi stage build example as well you remember we use hyphen p in docker run command to forward the port 3070 request from host machine to the container like this hyphen p option was used if you recollect and 3070 colon 3070 was used so this 3070 first 3070 is outside request so on the host machine the received request the request which are received on port number 3070 on the host machine will be forwarded to the container running on port number 3070 so that's what packet forwarding or ip forwarding or port forwarding is that is the first step port forwarding so it forward the traffic on a specific port from container to the kernel and second is host networking it disables the network namespace stack isolation which means giving you full access to the physical interface card or the namespace or the mac address of your interface card so disabling the namespace stack isolation from the docker host so giving you direct access to the host networking host here refer to the machine where the container engine is running so port forwarding let's review the current status of the kernel nat rules network address translation rules we'll only filter the table that hyphen t which is consulted when a new connection has been established that is hyphen n so this is what I tried IP tables hyphen T NAT hyphen L and N and what is important for us during this was first is masquerade rule 172.17.0.0 this was the our cider block for the docker so let's understand this rule the most important thing overall here is we can see five rule sections we call them as chains pre-routing chain, input policy, then post-routing, output. So these are chains. Pre-routing, input, output, post-routing and docker. So these chains are there or these rule sections are there. Why we call them as chain? Because we create rules and we keep on adding rules to the chain. What is the meaning of each of these chain? Let's understand one by one. Our focus will be pre-routing, post-routing and docker. The important one. Pre-routing. The rule specified in this chain, which is pre-routing, the first chain if you see here, where we have a target Kubernetes, Kubernetes services and a docker and a CNI host, uh, this uh, host port DNAT. This chain where we have these rules altering packets before they come into the network stack immediately after being received by an interface. So before they are sent to the stack the moment they are received something like uh, at the gate in your house you have gate so somebody before enter into the into the house you can check the person at the gate itself so this is a gateway or entry point 
So before that you decide and you check the ID of the person whether the person should be allowed or sent to be sent to the next door because the person is supposed to enter to the next house, not your house. So that is pre-routing. Before you allow the person to get inside, you check that and verify whether it is allowed to enter or not. That is pre called pre-routing. Similarly, post-routing. The post-routing, the second chain is post-routing. The rules altering packets before they go out from the network stack. Just imagine again the house example, somebody going out of your house and you are deciding whether you are allowed or not. Like a kid of six months and crawling out of your house, you may not allow. All right? right before leaving an interface. That is called post routing. And then the Docker. The Docker rules altering packets before they enter or leave the Docker bridge interface. So these are three chains of rules in port forwarding we are investigating. The pre-routing rules list any packet targeting the Docker rules action before they enter the interface network stack. Currently, the only rules in our case is return back to the caller. The post routing describe how each source IP in the Docker subnet, which was 172.17, if you recollect, will be targeted as masqueraded, which when sent to any destination IP, which override the source IP with the interface IP. Exposing these container ports, how can we do that? How can we directly reach the container port? How can we map that? You know that we can use expose instruction in the Docker file and which we used in our multi-stage build example as well. Or we can use hyphen hyphen expose flag at runtime to expose a port or you can use hyphen p lowercase or uppercase in the Docker run command. Exposing Docker ports via expose or hyphen hyphen expose. There are two ways to expose ports in Docker. One is expose instruction in the Docker file and second is hyphen hyphen expose flag at runtime. And the hyphen P and uppercase P, these are for port mapping, port forwarding. So using hyphen P flag, uppercase P flag, it lets you publish all exposed ports to random ports on the host machine. I am talking about this is a container running. Container is listening on port number 80. So where this port number 80 will be exposed on our host machine. It says that if you use hyphen uppercase P, it will be used exposed on any random port. And the packet will be transferring from this port number 80 to the random port on the host machine. So this is a short for upper, uh, you know, if you use the full form, it is a hyphen hyphen publish all. Then second is using lowercase p. This lets you publish a container specific port to the Docker host. It is short for hyphen hyphen publish lowercase. That is specific port you specify. In our example, in our lab assignment and demonstration, we have been using lowercase p. Let's look at the example of port forwarding once more. One more example. Let's create a lightweight Python HTTP web server container listening on port number 5000 and do some investigation with this example. So Docker run port mapping incoming port 5000 on my host machine. Container listening on port number 5000. Remove it. Interactive terminal mode. Python 3.7. This is the image. And uh, this is the uh, hyphen m http server, the name and port number 5000 listening on this and bind to all possible IP addresses. I will explain each line one by one. Let's go slow. So this is the command and this will run the container. Now if you see, this is the new Python image and uh, this is uh, running the container. Now if we, after running that container, we investigate the same port forwarding rule. IP tables hyphen T NAT hyphen L N and you see the extra rule available here that is destination port 5000 that port forwarding as you can see here any 
packet received on the IP address this should be forwarded to the destination port and here if you see docker here also we have destination port dnat tcp that uh, uh, protocol tcp and the options are nothing source means source means from anywhere from anywhere to anywhere this is the mapping destination port is 5000 and that should go to this ip address and this port number this is our container so this is uh, specifying the rule that if any packet is received on the host machine targeting or trying to reach port number 5000 as a destination send it to this particular ip address and this port number so this is a port forwarding with ip tables command we can verify and this is a fantastic example of understanding what is happening behind the screen how the packets are forwarded from kernel to the container these rules only forward because the packet filtering there's a module in kernel that module name is net filter that net filter module works to allow secure you know uh, packets to go outside or come inside the kernel so this port forwarding example is to make you understand that uh, the docker command is okay but what exactly happening is behind the screen this command is revealing the truth so we can see that two main differences from the original net configurations first was post routing a new masquerade target was added the masquerade is like a s net or source net target but instead of overriding the source ip with static or elastic inet ip uh, as a two source option the external ip of the inet interface is determined dynamically by the algorithm that means the traffic from ip address 172.17.0.2 which is the ip address of our container on the destination port or d port that is destination port 5000 will be directed to the interface ip docker second was this one a new dnet was added if you noticed dnet is commonly used to publish a service from internal network to an external ip address the rules in our case this that states that each ip packet from any ip on the destination port 5000 will be altered to internal ip address 172.17.0.2 on port number 5000 now the routing part container routing what all possible routing mechanisms we have there are more options there are four five options with the help of different drivers for example the first driver by default what we use is docker zero which is bridge this bridge driver if you use because we have these five bridge host none overlay and mac vlan bridge is the first one default one is the private default internal network created by docker on the host so all containers will get ip address from this interface to access each other it is used when your application run in a standalone container that need to communicate with each other look at this example this is your docker host machine this is your one container with ip address 172.17 this is another container with this ip address the third container and fourth container and fifth container so, so there are four containers so these containers with these ip address they can talk to each other they can communicate with each other on these ip addresses so this is possible through this bridge private default internal network which is created by docker if you are using host that will remove the network isolation that's what i was talking about between the docker host and the containers to use the host networking directly there's no isolation so you can directly use the port number 8 and uh, 5000 example here so there's no bridge nothing it is host networking direct so this is also called host networking 
I gave you two methods earlier, uh, port forwarding and host networking. So this is the second one. The third one is none, means you don't want any networking, isolated, no networking. Then we have the fourth one is overlay. Overlay is a special network which run across multiple physical hosts. This is physical host number one, this is host number two, this is host number three. Think of them as a physical or independent virtual machine or host machine or physical machines. And this overlay network is spread across multiple independent machines to create a networking so that containers from one host can talk to, can communicate with containers on another host. So for example, the Docker Zero running on this machine, host number one, web container using the IP address can communicate with the web container running on a Docker Zero of another network or another machine. So the overlay create an internal private network that spans across all the nodes participating in the swarm cluster. I repeat this particular use case is when you create swarm cluster. Swarm is a cluster of multiple docker host machines. So naturally if you are creating a cluster to host containers running applications they need to communicate with each other so this overlay network provide that mechanism for the containers running on different hosts which are a part of a swarm cluster we can use this overlay network mac vlan this assigns a mac address to the container making it appear as a physical device on your network so docker daemon routes the traffic to the container by their mac addresses so that is a physical address here your container is getting the physical ip address so when you are using mac vlan so this uh, physical network will be able to reach out to the container directly using the ip address of the container and that will appear as a physical ad address of the machine that is the fifth one driver those are five drivers then we can have linking of containers also where containers can talk to each other let's try this with example linking containers by linking containers you provide a secure channel via which docker containers can communicate with each other think of a simple web application here the web application what we need is one need a mysql database container running mysql database and second we need a apache web server and we need these two containers to talk to each other because my apache web server will be using the database running in uh, this machine uh, and the container which is mysql database container so they need to talk to each other and that can be done by using a term called a link let's understand with the example also and i will demonstrate this the linking containers you might have a web server and a database server when we talk about linking containers what we are talking about is the these two points one we launch one docker container that will run the docker database mysql database then we launch second docker container or the web server with a link flag to the container launch in step number one this one this way it will be able to talk to the database server via the link name let's look at this example first before we proceed so let's pull the images one is mysql and second i'm going to pull wordpress yes now let's pull wordpress also this wordpress uh, image will have apache web server with wordpress pre-installed not installed i would say uh, wordpress image the source code okay cool so let's launch the container now from the image docker run name is demo mysql the environment variable is mysql root password is sang1 hash 123 and in detached mode from this image which we have downloaded so container is running now i can log in if you see l uh, docker ps 
you will see the container running so i can uh, log into this container and create a database and so that i can use that in my wordpress let's do that so docker execute hyphen it the container name is demo mysql and the command is mysql hyphen u root and hyphen p and the password is what i specified here by through the environment variable now i create the database here so create database wordpress database created so i have a database available now which i will be using in my wordpress to configure and i'll use the root as the username and password what is specified here uh, for working so i have the database ready now let's uh, run the wordpress container and by creating a link with a demo mysql container so this is the link which i was talking about so uh, docker run demo wordpress link name demo mysql i mean with the container demo mysql and the name of the link is given and it will be available on port number 8082 forwarded to port number 80 inside my container which is running from wordpress image so i need to open the firewall firewall hyphen cmd hyphen hyphen permanent hyphen hyphen add hyphen port equal to 8082 because i need to access it from my local machine the host machine and reload it now therefore i can access my wordpress now it should be reaching uh, reachable from here 10.10.0.100.8082 is the port number and i should be greeted by wordpress yeah so there's a wordpress installation let me specify the host name uh, database name is wordpress what i specify username is root and the password was sangwan hash 12 sangwan hash 12 and database were name uh, was demo mysql and that is the name of your container there's a typo here it is not w o r l d is the wordpress running the installation successfully and uh, we have successfully connected to the database and launching this now username admin and the password let me copy it and email address install wordpress so the wordpress installation successfully completed and i can use this and i can log in now with admin username and the password and i'm working on my wordpress website which is running on two containers so this is perfectly perfect example of uh, linking containers we created a link to the database containers we are running wordpress inside one container all right and another uh, database container is running and we are accessing the database using link let's continue so we pulled the wordpress and the mysql images after downloading both images successfully we will run our backend mysql image by using this command docker run name demo mysql environment variable to pass the uh, password is this in detached mode from this image so the demo mysql is the name of the container sangwan hash 12 is the password for root user for our mysql database you can change it if you want then we are going to run our wordpress image and also we will link our wordpress container to mysql container by running this command that is docker run name demo wordpress link demo mysql and the uh, mysql and uh, port number 8082 on host machine should be forwarded to port number 80 inside the container in detached mode so the demo wordpress is the name of our wordpress we use hyphen hyphen link tag to link wordpress container to mysql container we can check that using docker ps command we verified that in fact we have completed the installation successfully so listing all network you can use the command docker network ls the command will output all the networks on your docker host and you can use sudo if you are using unprivileged user docker network ls that will list all the networks to troubleshoot there is no magic band team it is the log files and the investigation only 
so the details only will reveal the error because troubleshooting is a topic which is continuous and ongoing topic so troubleshoot you to troubleshoot the networking related issue you may need to investigate the network interface as well so if you want to see more details on the network associated with docker you can use the docker network inspect command so docker network inspect network name as an example this bridge so docker network inspect bridge that will give you uh, the details more comprehensive output about the bridge network if you want to create your own network that's quite easy you simply use the command docker network create you specify the driver name you know that there are five drivers bridge host none mac vlan and overlay so you specify which driver you want using the appropriate driver you create this network this is the name of your network that's all for this session. Thank you very much team.